Hi kids, in today's video we are going to start with unit number 1 which is classification of living things. In this unit we will learn about classification, introduction of the main kingdoms, classification and characteristics of animals and other things. So let's start. Kids classification means sorting out things into groups on the basis of similarities and differences among them. Figure 1.1 shows three groups of objects. As you can see here, cutlery, books, fruits. In each group, things are put together on the basis of some similarities among them. For example, all the things of group A are made of metal. This. The things are books in group B. However, in group C, all the things are fruit. In this unit, we will study different groups of living things and compare their characteristics. So, let's start with the characteristics of living things. There are millions of living organisms in our world. Scientists have grouped them on the basis of similarities in their characteristics. Grouping of living organisms on the basis of similarities and differences in their characteristics is called classification of living things. So kids, whenever we talk about similarities and differences between all the living creatures, it is called classification. Classification is essential for making their study easier. During classification, scientists examine the characteristics of an unfamiliar organism and find its proper group. They also suggest name for the organism for its identification. Now the five kingdom system of classification. Nowadays, scientists classify living things into five main groups called kingdoms. These are named as monera, protista, fungi, animalia and plantae. Examples of such belong to these kingdoms are as below. Kingdom monera, bacteria, protesta, algae, fungi, yeast and mushrooms, etc., animalia, animals, plantae, plants. So these are all five categories or kingdoms in terms of science that classify living things. These are basically groups. Bacteria. Bacteria are unicellular organisms. They are found everywhere. Some can make their food but others live in and get food from the bodies of other organisms or dead bodies. Algae. Algae are unicellular, colonial or multicellular organisms. They are found in ponds, lakes, seas, etc. They have chlorophyll and make their own food by photosynthesis. Some examples are given over here. Fungi are found as unicellular, multicellular or filamentous forms. All fungi like chlorophyll and cannot prepare their own food. However, they absorb food. Yeast, rhizopus and mushrooms are included in kingdom, kingdom fungi. Animals. Animals are a major group of multicellular organisms. They cannot prepare their own food. However, they depend on plants and other animals. Whereas plants are photosynthetic, multicellular organism, we learn about their further classification in the next coming videos. Classification and characteristics of animals. These are classified into two main groups, vertebrates and invertebrates. Such animals which have a backbone are called vertebrates, such as these. There are about 47,000 different kinds of vertebrates on the earth having backbone. They are further divided into five groups such as fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. Human beings, cows, goats, horses, tigers, cats, rabbits belong to a group of vertebrates called mammals. They have hair or fur on their bodies. Babies of the mammals are fed on the mother's milk. The young ones in mammals generally develop inside the mother's body. Second group is of birds, sparrows, crows, parrots, doves, robins, hens and pigeons belong to the group of vertebrates called birds. So this is the second group. 
They have feathers, wings and beaks. They have hollow bones and air sacs which make their bodies very light. Next is reptiles. Do you know kids, dinosaurs were the biggest reptiles in ancient times. However, they do not exist anymore. Now what exists are lizards, snakes, tortoises, crocodiles, alligators. They, they, they belong to a group of vertebrates called reptiles. They have very dry, thick and scaly skin which covers and protects their bodies. Some examples are tortoise, snake, lizard, crocodile, alligator. Amphibians. Toad, frog, salamander belong to a group of vertebrates called amphibians. They have four limbs and can live in water as well as on land. They breathe through lungs or skin. They usually have loose and wet skin. However, most of them spend their oral life on land and return to water to lay eggs. It, their eggs look like beads and jelly. They are soft and do not have hard shells. So, another information is, in winter, amphibians bury themselves in the mud and sleep for a long time to keep themselves safe from cold climate. Fishes. There are over 25,000 different kinds of fishes found all over the world. They live in water. They have streamlined bodies well suited to swim fast in water. Fishes have fins and tail which help them to swim. They have stiff scales on their skin for protection. They have gills to breathe in water. Most of the fishes reproduce by laying eggs. The other kind, invertebrates, animals which do not have backbone. So remember kids, vertebrates are all those animals and species that have their backbones. Whereas invertebrates, they don't have backbones. They are different kinds such as insects, sails, starfish and worms. So let's have a quick look at the insects. They are invertebrates, they don't have backbones. See, they all, they, they all have segmented body, abdomen, thorax and head of an ant. Butterfly, abdomen, thorax and head. Honeybee, abdomen, thorax and head. Cockroach, head, thorax and ab abdomen, but there is no backbone in them. Worms. It is clearly indicated in these, illustrated by these pictures that they don't have any backbones, they don't carry it. There are so many types of worms such as tapeworm, earthworm, flatworm, roundworm and many others. So this was from classification of living things. We have covered living things, main kingdoms and characteristics of animals that those are vertebrates and invertebrates. This is quite basic but very important topic. I hope you have enjoyed and understood the topic. I'll be back with some more. Till then, take care of yourselves. Bye.